Cambodia is a beautiful country in Southeast Asia, bordered by Thailand, Laos, and Olak, or Vietnam. The country is a fascinating mix of breathtaking scenery, simple cultures and traditions, stunning ancient temples, colonial architecture, genuine friendliness, and more. Cambodia has a magnificent and spiritual past. The glory of the Khmer Empire stretched from eastern Thailand and Laos to South Olak or Vietnam. The temples of Angkor, capital of Cambodia's ancient Khmer Empire, are a perfect fusion of creative ambition and spiritual devotion. Angkor Wat is still the spiritual heart of the country where people come to pray every day. Because of the spiritual atmosphere that exists in every Cambodian's heart, the country is blessed by God's grace, especially in its time of need. Cambodia has had the great fortune to receive the love of Supreme Master Ching Hai many times since the 1990s. She has provided financial assistance and association members assisted the Cambodian impoverished war and natural disaster victims. When the country suffered through both a flood and drought season during which crops were destroyed and the shortage of food was severe, hundreds of thousands of Cambodians were on the fringe of starvation. Supreme Master Ching Hai contributed over 6,000 tons of rice, which was delivered quickly to those affected. In a large-scale project called Raising Center, in the midst of barren and desolate acres of land, Supreme Master Ching Hai and association members constructed a new school, hospital, and Buddhist temple for the Cambodians. Free medical supplies, health examinations, and medical assistance were provided by our association members in the medical field. The royal family of Cambodia, including King Sihanouk Noradom, the Queen and Princess, have expressed their deepest gratitude toward Supreme Master Ching Hai and have invited her to the palace. At the opening ceremony of the Raising Center, Princess Marie Ranarit expressed her gratitude to Supreme Master Ching Hai. Over the years, Supreme Master Ching Hai has accepted invitations by the earnest truth aspirants to visit their land. We now invite you to listen to an enlightening discussion by Supreme Master Ching Hai with our association members entitled The Story of the Golden Elephant's Devoted Heart on May 15, 1996 in Cambodia. Good meditation. You enjoy? You feel the time pass quickly? Yes? Okay. When uh, we meditate, well, the time passes so fast, huh? Same, same as when we have a lot of good time, uh, good uh, company, huh? Then time passes so fast. Okay. There's a nice joke to wake you up. An old woman went to a supermarket and uh, she uh, went to tomatoes place. Oh, tofu. Vegetarian anyhow, huh? And she bent down to pick some tomatoes, and then because she was old, perhaps she bent it so awkwardly. And then it happened that her, her spine, you know, uh, gave her some trouble and uh, gave her a sharp pain. So she just uh, shriek, you know, like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> the way you, you see the mouse in the kitchen, yeah. And also the, the sellers, you know, in the counter say, Oh, wow. if you think the price of tomatoes is expensive, you should see the price of the chukini. <laughs> there was a disciple. Uh, he wanted very much to renounce the world. But he always claimed that uh, his family loved him too much, very terribly much. So they don't let him go, and he believed that. Now his guru said to him, hmm, Love? What is that? <laughs> that isn't love at all. Listen to me. And he revealed a very secret formula. 
uh, of the yogic uh, tradition by which you can fake your death, you know, and nobody would know. So he just uh, make him dead right there. The next day, everybody knows that he's dead. To all the uh, outward appearance, he's a dead man. And the house wah, was so loud with cries and wailings of his families and friends and all kinds of dogs and cats and all the pets in the family. They make a really very loud <laughs> chorus or opera. And the guru just show up at the door and uh, told the weeping family that uh, he had the power to bring the man back to life. No problem. But uh, one of the family members must replace him, must die for him. That's it. For example, the wife would be the best <laughs> because they have a very loving relationship. So the karma is equally shared between them both, almost. So if the wife would take the faith of the husband and die in his place, then the husband will come back to life. And the corpse was laying there and listening to all this. And every member of his family tried to bring enough excuses and reasons to tell the guru that uh, they are not uh, the suitable candidate. <laughs> The mother would say, Wow, I'm uh, the head of the family, and the father has died, and I have to look after all these members. Without her, the family would fall apart. And then the other brothers and sisters say they have kids and they have responsibility, and, and even if they are not married, they are going to. How can he leave his fiance alone now? Things like that. Oh, how can uh, he, she leave her husband after they just married? <laughs> And the one who already married a long time ago said, Oh, we have been married for so long, it's very difficult to leave my husband suddenly like this. And then the wife, uh, she uh, kind of uh, summed up all the sentiment of other people, including herself. She says she, she must stay and look after the families because she's the one who will take charge of all the finance and take care of all the details in the house. Yes. So she announced that. Uh, uh, according to all these uh, members' uh, reasons and uh, logic, I don't think it is necessary to bring <laughs> uh, the husband back to life. I think we can manage without him. So the cops just uh, woke up <laughs> and walked out with the guru. <laughs> so we have a story <laughs> about Shikamuni Buddha. You like to? Okay, this is called the golden elephant. <laughs> Anyhow, this is a white elephant, but I changed it into golden. Seen so many golden already, might as well have another golden elephant. Huh? Makes no difference to us whether it's white or golden. Oh, you would rather him white. Okay. <laughs> uh, when I was learning German, there was a cartoon, a very cute. I was a farmer's wife standing next to a white cow. And there was an artist, you know, painting portrait and picture. He came and asked the wife, <laughs> Can I paint your cow? And then she said, No, no, I like him white. <laughs> okay, now you can imagine, I take my canvas, my brush and my color and I paint the elephant golden, just to match other golden monkey, deer and uh, goose. So, this is one of the Buddha's previous reincarnation before he uh, became uh, a human Buddha, supposed to be. Huh? Now, long time ago, near the foothills of the Himalayas, there lived a magnificent golden elephant. <laughs> he was the lord of 80,000 elephants, and he reigned supreme over them. His only sorrow was that he had an, an aged and blind mother. Every day he roamed deep in the forest to gather wild fruits, and he sent the choicest to his mother with his followers. 
But these wicked elephants gave none of the fruit to the elephant's mother and ate it all up themselves. In the evening, when the elephant returned home, he used to ask his mother if she had eaten well, and she always replied that she had uh, been given nothing to eat the whole day. Finally, the elephant decided to leave his selfish herd. One night, when all the other elephants were asleep, he led his mother away to Mount Kadorana, somewhere in the Himalaya. Ah. He found a cave close by a sparkling lake covered with flowering pink lotuses, and he and his mother lived there alone by themselves. One day, a forester from Benares, who had come to this area to visit his relations, lost his way and found himself near the lake. Frightened by uh, his strange and unfamiliar surrounding, he began to lament and cry aloud his bad luck. The elephant, who was feeding in the lake, heard him and came out of the water, but uh, at the sight of the massive beast of the forest, <laughs> the, the person fled in fear. However, the elephant went after him and calling out, Don't run! Don't be afraid! I'm not going to harm you. Come here and tell me why you are weeping. So the forester told him, I have lost my way, O oh, elephant, and for the past seven days I have been wandering around in this terrible forest. Stop crying. I live here and I know the way out of the forest. The elephant lowered his trunk and lifting the man onto his back took him out of the jungle. The forester went on his way to Benares. On his return, he heard that King Brahmadatta's state elephant had died a few days ago. Uh, heralds wrote about in the city proclaiming that if any man know of or has seen an elephant fit for the king to ride, let him come forward with the information and he will be rewarded richly. So the forester, in hope of reward, immediately went to the king and reported to him about the golden elephant and where he lived. He said he has even marked the way carefully himself so he can go back to where the elephant stays. <laughs> Not only now, but he already had the mind to capture the elephant the moment he was rescued. Can you imagine that? I'm sure that we will be able to catch the animal, the forester told the king. So the king agreed readily and sent his uh, subordinate to go with the forester to catch the elephant, as well as a troop of soldiers. Hmm? After a journey of many days, through fields of ripe corn and fertile valleys. They arrived at the lake near Mount Kadorana. They saw the golden elephant collecting tender lotus shoots for his blind mother to eat. The elephant scented the presence of humans and looking up saw the forester hiding behind a tree. He thought, Oh, it is this ungrateful wretch who has led the king's men here. However, I am very strong. I can scatter a thousand elephants. Doubtless, I will be able to kill these puny men. But in doing so, I may wound or kill several. I do not want to harm them. Let them take me to the king, and I shall then ask to be set free. So the elephant trainers went down to the lake, this elephant allowed himself to be led away by his long golden trunk. Evening fell, and the elephant's blind mother waited in vain for her son. 
She had heard the noise made by the king's man and realized that they had taken away her son. She began to weep most bitterly. What am I to do now that my son has gone? Who will care for me? Blind and old that I am, my son is such a fine and noble animal. I am sure some king has taken him away to ride him into battle. Then he will be killed and I will never see him again. So she was crying and crying. In the meantime, the golden elephant has been brought to Benares. The whole city was decorated in honor of the king's new state elephant. Just an elephant for the king and the whole city was decorated. Can you believe this? Huh? Even though it's a Buddha's elephant, but they didn't know. Huh? Just for the king's sake. We thank you for your presence on today's episode of Between Master and Disciples. Up next is Animal World, our co-inhabitants, right after noteworthy news here on Supreme Master Television. May happiness and peace bloom evermore in your hearts. <laughs> 